Hello, and this is the sixth tutorial, and I think it will be the last for this game that I'm making. So, what we need to do is we need to make our second level. And to make a second level, we have to reset everything. So, on the, second, on the next frame, we delete everything with making a blank keyframe, and then we can just copy this code over, like that. Um, also, when you get to the exit, it tells the script to automatically go to the end. Well, we want it just to go to the next um, level, so we'll just have the root play, and it will play through this frame, remove everything, and then it will reset here. And once we have that code, we have to copy that and change it here also because it's a different frame had more script and now on this screen we can change it all up again and uh, since the first level we're making this our character go all the way over here then we need to start the level over here the second level we have to start it over here I'm using period and comma to go back and forth. And we can change up the level and make it harder or easier, depending on how weird you are. Because I like to make my levels easier the harder they're supposed to get. Let's make a maze kind of thing. Now remember our script is pretty cool, so we can kind of do however we want. And this should work, and if it doesn't, then we'll fix it. One coin, two coin, three coin, win. Now it's counted up a total of five. Because everything is reset. Can I fit through there? Oh no. I don't, I can't fit through there, because it's going to be thinking that the um, circle is a square because um, of math related stuff see that's its bounding box I just so I can't get through there so I have to go around to get it pretty cool and then to the end and then over here we need to make it stop in the secret area or the end which it should be so that you can win the game so there you have it you have two levels two levels man gosh and then and usually with levels you'd start off easier and go harder but knowing knowing people you usually don't go by that if they're weird Okay, so our game is pretty simple. All it is is avoid, collect, and get to the end. But I think we should make something more complex. So this should start here because it's the next level. Now I think we should add something that reduces the size of your character so that you can get past an obstacle. And we'll take the wall oops we'll drag the wall into this and we'll make it so that it's half impossible to get through no matter what actually a couple glitches I guess you might be able to do um well you can't get that through there at all you can add a couple coins just to make it fun And yes, you can stretch coins if you feel like it. Okay, and we should make a button, which would be a square, I guess. And we'd reduce that. It's just going to be a quick little weird button. And we'll name it button. Oops, I spelled it wrong. 
And it'll be a movie clip button. Button of joy. Because it's the game with joy and stuff. So this button will be press when you go over it. And press it, I guess. So this button is going to be kind of complex. Try and follow me. But what we'll do is we'll have it stopped. I guess it would be pretty easy. We'll have it stopped at the beginning. Then on every frame, on we'll use our awesome enter frame thing. On enter frame, we'll check if this is hit testing um, root.ball. Yes, yeah, so you can hit test from many places. Um, yeah, if it's hitting root.ball, then start playing. Now, there is a way where you could, um, well, I, I guess that's kind of getting too plugs. Never mind. Okay, so we'll start playing this thing. So on the second frame, and typically you'd have an extra layer up here with all the action script. So on the second frame, we'd have root.ball.x scale equals 10. And we do the same with y scale. Actually, I like x scale only. Okay, we'll do x scale only. I don't know if you understand what I'm doing right now. And at the very end, let's say for five seconds, you have these awesome powers. And then root.ball.x scale equals 100. And we'll stop. And now we need an awesome animation where at the very beginning, when you just click on it the first time, I didn't want a huge text box. It'll count down how long you have until you're back to your normal size. And again, I'm just having fun here. You can add as many fun things as you want to your game if you make one like this. And what it would do is five and then on the second second, <laughs> I'll say four, and on the third second, which should be two seconds, three, and on this one it would say two, and then this one it will say one. And then at the very end, it would reset. Um, I'd add a beeping sound on every second. Kind of like my TNT in my Mind Blocks game beeps. And once I get to that third frame, that third the third level, I mean, Oh, no one's going to ever figure that out. Once I get to that third level, I'm going to test out that button. Helps so much having that boundary thing. The little box around the, the ball. Okay. I did it. So, that's how you could make a button and make it do cool things. But, um, you have to make sure that the button gets to the end of its round by the time you get to the end of the level. Because if you, if it doesn't quit and your um, ball doesn't go back to its normal size, then you'll be playing the rest of the game with the ball that size. So, on the next level um, that you might have, you would reset the ball's 
um, x scale and y scale. It's pretty simple. And then the last thing I need to tell you about the very much importantness of having a loader. A loader will make it so that people don't have to wait an hour for the flash game to load. So you have to make a quick loader just in case. It'll look like a rectangle usually. I've made many loaders and they're not all rectangles so that's why I say usually. And because loaders are fun. So you usually make a rectangle, center it, and then you make them, you copy it, and then you paste it in it. Oh, oops. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> you paste it again so that there's two of them. Press F8, and I make its registration right there, and I name it loader. And so now we have two. We have that one, which I'm going to make blue, and then the green one on top. And this is the actual loading bar. And now the loading bar, when I go on top of it, and I double click, and on the frame, I can make it load. And what I do is I do this script. On enter frame e equals function. And you can use the get byte get bytes loaded out of get bytes total to figure out how much loaded what percentage it's loaded yet or you can do root dot loaded frames or something frames loaded okay you do frames frames loaded out of root dot total frames but it's a lot more choppy and doesn't really give you an accurate percentage so I use get bytes total and I say x scale equals get bytes loaded out of get bytes total times 100. And that should simply, when I simulate the download, it should make it scroll up. But I don't have that much, I don't have that many bytes in the game total right now. It's kind of a small game. But when you get big games, loading bars are really necessary. And you just do that, and it would, when you simulate the download, it'll do it. And let me see if it will do it better this way. I'm a little confused, one second. Oh, I'm sorry. You do root dot... Sorry about the pause too, but root dot get bytes loaded out of root dot get bytes total. That's how you do it. I'm sorry I messed up there. And then it would show you the loading bar, and it will load. And when it gets to the end of its round, it gets the next frame. But the only reason it gets the next frame is um, before it's done loading, is because it hasn't stopped this frame yet. You need to stop it, and then when it's done loading, so. When it's done loading, go to the next frame. Make the root go to the next frame. So you say if x scale equals equals 100, root dot go to and stop one, two. And that will load it. It'll keep loading past the first frame. And then it will finish. And I just use the slowest loading method but you could do like T1 or DSL. You can make your own Comcast. And here we are, we have our awesome game that you can add as much as you want. And if anyone ever figures out how to get past this level, besides me here. Ah, oh, it's, it's a hard level. Anyway. Well, I'm done with this game, but I will be adding more stuff on YouTube, possibly, related to Flash, and if you have any requests, I'll, I'll try and teach it, and I think I covered most of the things that you might need to know in Flash, Action Script 2.0. Thank you for watching this series, or maybe just this video, and I'm out. Peace.